Chapter 2. Tape, Tracks, and Threading. Frank, this machine really amazes me. Now tell me this, should I buy a certain width or length of tape for my recorder? Are there different materials I should look for? And what would be best for my use? Well, there's no real problem. All home and professional audio tape recorders use quarter-inch wide tape. There are other widths of tape, but those are for special machines and special purposes, Bob such as recording data coming in from satellites or for giant electronic brains. Quarter-inch is the standard, however, for all home-type recorders. Are all brands of quarter-inch tape alike? Well, I think we might simplify things by saying that there are two types, Bob. Now, basically, the difference between these is in the base material. Probably the most widely used is acetate-based tape. This is the same material that is used in motion picture film, and you would treat it in about the same way. It uh, shouldn't be exposed to excessive humidity or high temperature, nor should you allow it to dry out excessively. This might make your tape become brittle, and it would then be uh, highly susceptible to breaking. I was afraid complications would enter the picture. What kind of special storage should I prepare for? None. Tapes will probably last for years, indefinitely under normal temperatures and humidity found in the average home. Of course, the ideal temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the humidity should be 50%. But don't get excited, Bob. This would apply only when the tape is supposed to be stored over several lifetimes and is kept in vaults where those conditions can be and are scientifically regulated. Now, getting back to uh, the uh, types of tape, the acetate base is available in two thicknesses. One and one half mil is the most commonly used. Now, of course, a mil, <laughs> you know, is only a thousandth of an inch thick. This type is made by all tape manufacturers. And in order to increase the recording and playing time, however, a new one mil acetate tape is now being manufactured. And with this thinner tape, you get more footage that can be packed onto a reel, and so we get about 50% more time on the same size reel. For example, on a seven inch reel, you can increase the playing time from 32 minutes per track with one and a half mil tape to 48 minutes with one mil tape. So you see, where you're recording a long performance, those operas you like so well, by using a thinner tape, you might be able to get the entire opera on a single reel. Well, now, the other base material is mylar or polyester base. Uh, this, uh, this tape is generally more expensive, although the price has come down as volume and uh, production efficiency have gone up. The mylar or polyester has one advantage, Bob, and that is that it's impervious to temperature and humidity changes. Of course, it's tougher than acetate too, Bob. But as far as your recorder is concerned, there's no difference between the two because the oxide coating on mylar is the same as it is on acetate. Remember I said that mylar was tougher? Well, with its added strength, it's possible to manufacture one half mil tape, which means you get twice as much recording time as you would on one mil. But there is a slight catch, however. This one half mil tape requires a lot more care in handling because it's so thin. Since it's only one half of one thousandth of an inch thick, you have to record very carefully or you'll have what we call print through. Well, that's a new term for me, Frank. What do you mean by print through? Well, a, a better term might be uh, to transfer through, Bob, because that's what sometimes happens. This one half mil tape is so extremely thin that the magnetic patterns actually transfer right through the layer to the next one. And because of this problem, VM doesn't recommend these ultra-thin tapes for our recorders. Now, these mylar and acetate tapes have variations, too. Different oxide formulations for special purposes. For instance, you can buy a tape known as a high-output tape. The oxide is different from the regular tape and is more sensitive to sound. Like using a faster film, you know, in your camera. And there's a low print-through tape. And this particular tape has an oxide formulated, which resists the effect of any magnetism except that which is put on the tape by the record head itself. Generally, though, Bob, unless you have some special application in mind, you can do 99% of your recording on standard tape. I can't see how the magnetism on these thin tapes, on any tape for that matter, will last. Won't some of it fade away? Bob, once you've recorded something on tape, you have it recorded permanently for all practical purposes. Tests have indicated that the lifetime of a good tape is at least 100 years. As a matter of fact, tapes have been buried in time capsules that won't be open for a thousand years. In other words, if I want to leave my mother-in-law's voice to posterity, I'll have to store it in a time capsule. <laughs> well, I'll remain neutral on that one, Bob, but you reminded me of a couple of more good points for tape storage. 
tape should never be stored tightly wound because it creates a strain which might deform the tape. Of course, your VM is adjusted for correct winding, so you won't have to worry about it. However, if you get a reel that seems to be tightly wound, or before you play a tape that has been stored for a long period of time, I'd suggest you rewind it through the recorder and remove any tension before you actually play it. Oh, another thing, Bob. Don't store your tape where it will be exposed to strong electrical fields. Near electric motors, for example, or loudspeakers with large magnets in them, or, or anything of that nature. These electrical fields could erase your tape. You know, regular house wiring uh, and, and the like are perfectly safe since it takes an electrical field that is strong enough either to cause the tape to vibrate or to exert an attraction for the tape uh, to cause any erasure. Incidentally, this erasure action is the same principle used in bulk erasures, where an entire reel of tape is wiped clean of sound in seconds. May I interrupt again for a second, Frank? I'd like to backtrack to the different types of tape. You said there were two basic types of tape, although there were also different thicknesses and oxide variations for special purposes. I understand this, but did you forget about all the other kinds I'll have to buy? Half-track, dual-track, and quarter-track tapes. And then I'll have to buy some monaural tape as well as stereo tapes. Well, what would you suggest I buy? The same brand for all of these, or, or what? <laughs> Slow down, Bob. You don't have to buy any of them. Well, how can I possibly record what I want if I don't buy all these different tapes? Bob, there's no difference in basic tapes. All the tape that you purchase for recording, regardless of the brand, is going to be a quarter of an inch wide, and it'll be perfectly blank. It has no tracks on it whatsoever, and you can use it for recording either stereo or monaural. Remember, the number of tracks that you ultimately place on the tape will depend on how many you want, and the ability of your recorder to record one or two or three or four tracks. Also, whether your machine will record both stereo and monaural, or just monaural. And to think, I was going to ask Harry Downey to order me uh, one of each. <laughs> well, Frank, what is the difference between tracks? Well, a full track tape is one which has recorded the entire width of the tape. The tape moves in one record-play direction only. In other words, you play the tape through the entire reel, and before it can be played again, you have to rewind it back to its original starting point. With dual track or half track, and they both mean the same thing, Bob, the first recording is made on the top half of the tape. And to record the bottom half, and thus double our recording time, you flip the reel over just like a phonograph record and follow the same identical recording procedure. Now that both tracks are recorded, remember that the top track is going in one direction and the bottom track in another. And that's why in playing your tape, you flip over or invert the reels the same as a phonograph record to play both sides. Remember, too, in both record and play, the tape must travel from the supply reel on the left to the take-up reel on the right. That's important. Remember that. Always left to right, left to right. The latest development is four-track tape recording, doubling the recording and playtime of your two or dual track tape. Four track is a real tape saver because you can record as much as two full hours at the seven and a half inch per second speed or four full hours at the three and three quarter inch per second speed. Another thing I like is that we now have four track stereo tapes for little more than the cost of a stereo record. On top of the price, we get the real quality and high fidelity that lasts just about forever. Well, getting back to our four tracks, Four tracks makes it possible to play a stereo tape through the machine and when we finish one side, flip the full reel over to the spindle on the left and play it through again without rewinding. Before you have a chance to get confused, Bob, let me explain how four track recording works. Now, see this. The tracks on the tape are numbered from the top down. One, two, three, four. That, that shouldn't be too difficult, should it? Now, the head that records the four tracks does not have four pole pieces on it, it just has two. Now, how do these two pole pieces put sound on each of four tracks? Well, in recording a four-track monaural tape, set the machine selector switch to the one, four position. We put the tape on the supply reel and record track one all the way through. Now, without changing our selector switch, we simply flip over and invert the reels with the full reel now back on the supply spindle and record through again. Now we have recorded tracks on the top and bottom of the tape, just as in dual track recording, but there is a wide space in the middle of the tape where we can still add two more tracks of recording. Now the next step is to move our selector switch to the 3-2 position. 
We invert both reels, record all the way through the tape, leave the switch in the 3-2 position, invert or flip over both reels, record all the way through. Now we've recorded all four tracks monorally, track one on the first pass, track number four on the second, track number two on the third time through, and track number three on the last time through. <laughs> Do you follow me? I can follow the procedure for recording and playback easily enough, but how can you do this with only two pole pieces in the head? That's an easy one to explain, Bob. Since the head does have two pole pieces, when we record the first track, we energize only the top pole piece. Now, this remained energized when we recorded track four after we inverted the reels. In our next step, when we change the selector switch to the 3-2 position, our switch cut out the top pole piece and energized the lower pole piece while we recorded tracks two and three. Now, this brings up another point to remember. Because of the way we recorded, tracks one and three are recorded in one direction, and two and four are recorded in the opposite direction. That's why we play back our four-track monaural recordings the same way we recorded them. Now, when we use our machines for either stereo recording or playback, tracks one and three become a stereo pair in one direction, and tracks two and four are a stereo pair in the other direction. For example, on playback, our stereo pair will be played through two speaker systems. One track through one system, and the other track through the second system. Of course, these are being played simultaneously to get the stereo effect. Hey, you look kind of puzzled on this one, Bob. Well, maybe I can explain it a little differently. Now, let's see. Hold out your hands in front of you, Bob, with your fingers pointed in toward each other. Now, leave your index and your second fingers as they are, but fold the other fingers and your thumbs back into your palms. Right. Now slip the index and second finger of one hand between those of the other hand. Now do you get the picture? You now have two fingers, or two tracks, pointing to the left, and two fingers, or two tracks, pointing to the right. This is exactly the way four tracks are recorded or placed on the tape. Comes the dawn. I can visualize it now, Frank. Let me recap it, though, just so I'll be certain. That's a good idea. A dual track tape is recorded one half the width of the tape in one direction, and then after turning the reel over, the second half or track is recorded in the other direction. Exactly right. Now, for four track tape, the two outside tracks are recorded first, leaving a blank space in the middle of the tape. And we turn the reel over after recording the one track or before we record the other outside track. I'll give you 100% on that. Now, we turn the selector switch to the next position and well, we just repeat the same exact process. Only this time, we're recording the two tracks in the middle of the tape. With all four tracks recorded, tracks one and three are in one direction, while tracks two and four are in the opposite direction. This is why you called one and three and two and four stereo pairs. Right. If we were recording or playing stereo tapes, we'd just flip over the reels and would not have to rewind. Is that right? That's absolutely correct, Bob. Good for you. Now. There's one other point, however, that I'd like to mention because you might run into it sometime. You know, originally, stereo was recorded on two tracks only. Each used about one half the tape, or dual track recording, but both tracks in the same direction. Now, don't worry if you inherit some of these older tapes. Your new VM recorder will play these just as easily and as well as the new four track tapes. In fact, it will even play the very first tapes produced, which were for staggered head playback. So your VM will play any tape on the market, new or old, stereo or monaural. How's that? Sounds great. But are staggered and uh, two-track stereo tapes still being produced? Staggered tapes have just about passed out of the picture, production-wise. But there are still a lot of them around. In fact, I still have quite a few reels myself. Two-track stereo tapes are still being produced uh, for the older two-track machines, but the trend is toward a standard uh, four-track because of the greater economy in recording time, and they cost less. Frank, is it true that threading a tape recorder is difficult? Oh, no, Bob. Not unless you have ten thumbs. Thread it once, and you're the master. Here, let me show you how to do it. First, we'll put this blank reel of tape on the supply, or left-hand spindle. Now let's unwind about 18 or 20 inches of tape, and hold the end between the thumb and index finger of our right hand. Now... Just above the index timer, to the left of our push buttons, you'll notice a little line on the escutcheon. Place the index finger of your left hand just behind that line. This will act as a guide for placing the tape in the slot just above the push buttons. See? Mm -hmm. Now, with your right hand, still holding the end of the tape, bring the tape directly above the slot and lower it into position. 
To the right of the push button on the escutcheon, you'll notice that our line continues. If it hasn't already fallen into place, make certain that the tape is between the white plastic rod and the tuning eye and in front of the polished guide post next to it. Now, bring the tape up and into the right hand or take up reel so that it will turn counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, Bob. Now, press the tape against the hub with your finger and make two or three turns. Got that? Mm -hmm. That's usually enough to bind the tape right to the reel, you see, so that it won't slip. If it does slip, you just wrap your first few turns a little more tightly. Oh, look, I did it the first time. But uh, what about this threading hole in the center hub? Well, it can be used, Bob, but it isn't necessary. I'll tell you, I don't use the threading hole simply because it puts a twist in the end of the tape. When I think of what Edna goes through in threading her sewing machine, threading a tape recorder is a snap. <laughs> it certainly is, if you do it the same way every time. That's why practice makes threading so easy, and it just takes seconds. <laughs> 